Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining Alibaba Cloud AI Forward Summit today. So on my left, we have a distinguished uh, panelist, and they are representing my personal brands. So we, let me just uh, quickly you know, um, run through um, the panelists' names and also having them to say a quick hi to all the audience. So maybe from the far, uh, I have a Mr. Chris Tang, president of Alibaba Group in strategy development. And Chris is also known as the world's most influencer, um, influential uh, CMO by Forbes. Thank you, Chris. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Great to be here. And we also have uh, uh, Kish TJ Mule, Chief Information uh, Officer of Sephora Asia. I know that you are passionate about driving the business transformation. Please say a hello to our Indeed. audience. Morning, everyone. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And then the beautiful lady here, uh, Shivani Sani, uh, Global Vice President of uh, Digital and Tech Business Unit, Haleon. Um, I know that you are also a global top 100 women tech, right, by the technology uh, magazine, yes. Hello, everyone. Delighted to be here. Looking forward to this session. So um, I guess that everyone recall the whole 2023 until now, the AI boom was fueled all about the news, you know, and this whole morning we've been talking about the AI summit. And you guys representing the uh, most renowned uh, retail brand. So, you know, we would love to uh, hear your AI vision and perspective or how AI is going to change um, the industry and also our human life. Yeah. So maybe, um, Chris, maybe you can um, share with us some of the, uh, uh, what Alibaba Group has been, you know, adopting the AI technology and best practices. Yeah. Um Last year was really a year of AI. I think uh, we cannot go to a dinner table without talking about AI. Um, this year, in my opinion, will be really a year of action. So after almost a year of debate, discussion, discovery, experiments, uh, we finally come up with some ideas of how AI can help our business. Uh, for Alibaba, however, AI is nothing new to us, to be honest. Uh, we've been um, building Alibaba as a platform uh, for our business model to connect supply and demand. So on one hand, we have to use uh, the big data technology to service our shoppers, users, to, be, to give them a better user experience or, or namely shopping experience. On the other hand, we have uh, unleashed uh, the potential of data as well to support uh, our merchants to be able to have tools and products uh, dashboards and all that to be able to understand what the consumers want um, and really help them to drive their growth and build their brands in a, uh, with, the, with the help of data over the last decade. Just some example, uh, on a daily basis as we are reaching 1.3 billion consumers uh, every day, uh, we are for example using photo recognition, you know, computer visioning uh, technology to help support the shoppers to find uh, the right product that they are looking for by the snap and buy functions on Taobao, for example. Or the facial recognition that everybody, when you use e-wallet to, to make a payment, you know, auth authentication of your personal identity is really important for financial industry. That is also billions of, uh, you know, um, actions that we're doing on our platform. All those examples we've been doing for years, and because we have uh, built Alibaba Cloud as the infrastructure to support our business with, uh, t with the feature uh, about around data intelligence. So we're able to build one after another innovations to service our clients better and better on top of a, a very efficient cloud uh, uh, platform. So the message I want to say is, uh, yes, we're excited about the possibility of driving AI to help our business. but Let's think about how do you build the right architecture on the cloud infrastructure so all the AI possibilities becomes possible. Just like, uh, you know, in retrospect uh, about Alibaba growth, what has happened in the last uh, decades uh, with Alibaba to, to grow at scale. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Maybe let's hear um, our clients' you know, perspectives as well. So, as I said, I'm personally fans to all those brands. So for Sephora, right? I'm the member of Sephora for years, right? Thank you. So thank you. So hopefully we could also hear from you, right? I mean, so 
definitely is a very fashionable retail brand. And what's your take here, right? How do you put in uh, big data or you know AI technology to fusion the retail brand as such, like Sephora, uh, to drive the customer, you know, satisfaction? Sure, sure. I really liked how Chris put it. Uh, AI technology um, and and any technology for that matter is not new uh, to Sephora as well. Uh, we are one of the world's uh, global uh, uh, beauty omnichannel retailers. Um, and one of the advantages uh, and huge opportunities we have uh, being in the retail space uh, is that we have uh, first party ownership of all the transaction data that runs through our system. Uh, this is true uh, both for the physical brick and mortar retail world um, as well as for the online space, right? And with, with the power of uh, data really come the opportunities to uh, leverage it in the right way, uh, essentially to solve business problems. So our approach to AI technology um, has been really a shopper first, consumer first approach, uh, whereas technology is an enabler, right? So we would seldom start with a AI first use case or a technology first use case. It would always be what is the business problem we are trying to solve? Uh, it could be in the supply chain space in terms of better and efficient, more um, uh, effective demand planning uh, in a way to reduce out of stocks, have the right assortments in the store. Um, it could be predicting uh, the consumer demand for key consumer promotions, be it online or offline uh, sales. Um, it is more often than not providing the right product recommendations to our shoppers uh, when they visit us again online or offline. Um, and all of this is powered through the power of both technology and, and data and the AI models uh, that uh, help us uh, really to serve the consumers better. Um, in addition to first party data, um, I would also submit that uh, Sephora has the unique advantage of having a very strong and loyal member base. Um, so large uh, part of our business really runs through our uh, member base and we have very rich information about their behaviors, lifestyle, shopping habits that allow us to uh, uh, tailor the consumer experience uh, to them uh, wherever they might visit us. And increasingly, uh, that's becoming a consumer expectation uh, to be pervasive across online and offline world. Uh, so a lot of new and interesting use cases are emerging in that front. Thank you. I do notice that sometimes my favorite colorful lipsticks will be out of the order. And then they will recommend to some of the, you know, world celebrity kind of recommended, you know, uh, products. So it, indeed, it's a quite personalized experience, right? Um, now I have another, you know, uh, client. Uh, Shavani is actually representing Haleon. Um, I mentioned to her just when she walked into the uh, conference hall, I said, you know, my house is full of your products, you know, from Panadol to Centrum, you know, to even toothpaste, right? So uh, I believe every Singaporean family having a lot of your products in the world as well. Yeah, maybe you could also share with us, right, what's your take with all this year that your, uh, you know, thorough experience in the data and, and the technology, what might be the uh, AI vision in your company's view? Thanks, Eileen. I was really happy to hear you're using Helion products. Uh, so some people may not know Helion, but I, I'm pretty sure you know our brands. Uh, I'm hoping you've brushed your teeth with Sensodyne this morning. So that's our, um, <laughs> you did, okay, great. And I hope you don't need Panadol after this session, which is our headache pain management brand. Uh, but as you can understand, we are working in the areas of uh, consumer healthcare and uh, the purpose of our company and the purpose of uh, our, all the employees, including myself personally, is delivering everyday health with humanity. So that is a very big purpose for us and which, with which we live every day, making sure that we're improving the lives of our consumers and get, doing better for our patients. So uh, with that purpose in mind, I think one of the things which we have realized is the trends of the consumers is really taking self-care putting the health in their hands, making sure they, they are empowered to make their choices about health and take care of their health. So a part of our growth strategy in key markets like China, we have looked at that actually personalization, hyper-personalization, giving digital experiences so the consumers have health in their hands, they can make their choices, is a very powerful way of giving them a complete uh, healthcare solution. So not just the products, but also the services as well. So that is part of our core strategy of, you know, we are bringing trusted science in and we are bringing in uh, consumer experiences which are relevant to our consumers. So actually to fuel that, we're actually using a lot of technology AI. And as Shitaj and Chris put in, for most tech people, AI is not new. But of course, it's exploding now with Gen AI and the possibilities it brings is absolutely amazing. So uh, we've been using AI, we've been using data and technology to solve 
business problems like you know simplification of our work processes, looking at our supply chain um, and where it, where it helps with demand planning, uh, su supply forecasting, etc. But also around uh, consumer experiences. So one of the examples I have for today is also around personalized nutrition, yeah. which is the area where. Uh, we are working with Centrum and uh, Alibaba around how do we provide uh, personalized nutrition to our consumers. More about it later. I was looking forward to it. Please keep me young and pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so maybe I'll lead another question for, for, the, uh, for, the, for the Sage, right? Uh, because you, you also mentioned the Gen AI, and we know there's a big things, right? So uh, maybe I go back to Chris again, right? Um, since Gen AI is a big thing, and from your perspective, right, um, you, you're also leading a lot of strategy projects in Alibaba as well. What, what, might, what might be the next big change, right, that you, you foresee in the Gen AI uh, for the coming industries? Yeah. Um, I think we're going through right now an exciting phase of uh, over-creating contents for our, our, your, for our customers uh, or shoppers. Think about, you know, we used to have to spend 100 hours to make a film. Now it only takes 15 minutes. So for the brands, we have, we have, have uh, two leading brands in the retail industry. It's easier for the marketing team to get excited, to say, hey, why don't we make 1,000 film to bombard the market with what's working? So as a consumer, it will happen that once we click on something we like, we're going to receive 100 similar videos from different brands. Would that make us happy? So I think at the end of the day, AI is there to make our consumer happier. Uh, in the last 20 years, with the invention of mobile technology, we have made technology more personal in terms of the way we service our customer because you know, mobile represents them, it's adjacent to their, you know, uh, physically. But we, are, we haven't done enough about personalization. So I think it's a great time for us to, to leverage AI to, do, to dig much deeper on how do, we, how do we make personalization happen possibly so people don't feel bothered, they feel happier. So, so that's the big opportunity I'm seeing uh, with Gen AI instead of you know, creating too much contents to bother them. Thank you. So not too much unnecessary content to bothering our consumers. So uh, you, you guys are on the front line with the consumers, daily basis. So how, how, do, you, how do you see this Gen AI is going to change um, you know, for Sephora? Um, sure. I, I think uh, I agree with Chris. The potential of uh, Gen AI in the long term is huge. Uh, however, our approach in the near term is one of test, learn, and evolve. Um, right? I think this is a new space where we are really learning our way through. Uh, versus going into the deep end with uh, really big bets right off the back. Um, so we have multiple experiments uh, happening in the company across the group, both in Asia as well as in other regions. Uh, some of them are internal employee facing, uh, where we are leveraging technology to provide the right knowledge repository information uh, about our products, brands, as well as internal company policies, information available on the internet uh, to internal employees, our beauty assistants. Uh, so that's one internal use case. Um, externally, also, we are uh, now having small-scale pilots um, on our Sephora app, for instance, where we are uh, opening up certain traffic uh, to really interact with our uh, beauty assistant uh, online. Uh, so versus what would be a human person or in the past maybe a chatbot, uh, you know, could be uh, in the future powered uh, through a Gen AI uh, LLM-based uh, model, uh, right? And again, we are at the experimental stage uh, yet. Um, and, and like with every technology, uh, perhaps the long-term potential is often understated. Uh, the short-term potential is usually overstated. Um, and, and Gen AI certainly, I believe, is, is one such technology which is disruptive. And like every disruptive technology is going through the hype cycle, probably we are at the uh, peak of the hype right now. But, but I do believe that you know, uh, in, in due course, we will see what works um, and, and they, they do what's the right thing uh, from a business and from a consumer standpoint. It could be personalization, as, as Chris said. It could be internal productivity. Um, so we will be more driven by business problems and consumer needs uh, uh, versus purely from a technology uh, standpoint. So the, it will be helping internal, externally. Yes, Shavani, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, Chris and Shitej already put uh, you know, the power of AI there. Uh, the point I would like to add is that while there is so much potential with AI and it's exploding right now, it's also responsibility for technology people as well as you know, companies to make sure they're doing it the right way. 
Uh, so uh, what we're doing is also bringing in responsible AI principles, because as you're building these models, you want to make sure this is done in a way which is non-biased, right? There's fairness in the data models which we build. It is explainable, yeah. right? So you can actually talk about what data is in it. Uh, it is trusted and secure. It's private. As well as it's based on your companies, you can stand behind the trusted science algorithm which you've put in, in that. So, uh, and it needs to also have kind of a human agency to it, that while it is artificial intelligence, there is actually a human agency part which is extremely important that the decision making is in the hands of the humans. So I think bringing that responsible AI foundation to anything we do will be absolutely critical because that's only we can actually take that power of uh, uh, generative AI and unleash that in the right way. And this also has financial implications because, as you know, most, com most countries like the EU has passed the EU Act. Uh, if you're not doing this responsibility, the regulations will also come and get, and there's actual impact to your revenue if you can't explain your models, if there's biases in the models as well. So that's how we're actually approaching it. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I think that's a whole point that just now Professor Miao Chen Yan, uh, exactly. representing the NTU, she mentioned about the big data, small data, and also you know the AI ethics. It's definitely important that we put in the responsibility uh, behind it. And I know that you actually, when you keep mentioning about the human, is actually also your company's, you know, right, the the motto of it is right for humanity. Exactly. Yeah. So that's perfect. So. Um, because the time is really flying fast, maybe I could have a one more chance to having all of you to probably wrap up, giving a um, you know a quick um, advice uh, to probably the CXO here in the in in the conference room. In this journey, we have I mean it just started, but also we have to act fast, right? What might be the advice that you could give to the team here that how do we adopt the AI technology smart? Well, as I say, I think the ultimate goal for us to use AI for retail business is to make our cons consumer even happier. But to do that, I think uh, we're seeing the power of AI on the productivity front. But on the other hand, uh, we have huge issue or a challenge ahead of it, which is about accuracy. You know, we don't want to be misled by wrong information summarized by AI, you know, therefore our life, uh, you know, goes to the wrong direction. So I'm pretty much inspired by what the Shivani initiated at Helion about the responsible AI. I think that accuracy, that uh, integrity around AI is something we need to work together as, uh, you know, especially industry leaders sitting in this room. Thank you, Chris. Yes, Thanks. please, Kay. Um, I would I would reiterate two points that I that I made uh, uh, a minute ago. Uh, first is really uh, start with the business problem to solve, uh, and then start with a, a consumer or shopper problem to solve. Uh, I think that is probably the right starting point for for any business or technology leader for that matter. That's one. Uh, and the second one I would say is uh, learn by doing. Right. So so the approach uh, really needs to be test, learn, and evolve. Uh, and I think we can learn so much by doing. Um, right. And and starting small is often the best way uh, to learn. Thank you. Yes. So uh, two points from me. Do it responsibly and do it to delight your consumers. This has so much potential to actually be relevant to our human uh, problems which we have in terms of healthcare, especially. I feel make it relevant, make it delightful. Thank you so much. So, you know, let's do this AI journey together. We is a huge responsibility as for the humanity and humankind. Thank you so much for your sharing today. Um, and then please enjoy the conference of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you.